Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Stefan, and today we're gonna to talk about water, unique energetic properties of water. Because water has an amazing ability to hold on to and store energy and information from its environment or energy and information that you use into it. So we'll go from the basics of water, its elemental composition and molecular structure, and the fact that it forms hydrogen bonds into the quantum dynamic properties of water water nanostructures and coherency domains. We'll talk about how water interacts with our biology, basic biologic interactions, but then also how water influences our health and wellness, our consciousness, and our experience of reality. So there's a lot to talk about with water. I'm doing it here from Sparky Foss Waterfall in Iceland, home to some of the purest and best water on earth. I feel like this is a fitting place to talk about water. And with that, let's dive right in. Now water is composed of two different elements. You have two hydrogen atoms for every oxygen atom, and they form what's known as water or dihydrogen monoxide. And this water here, as you can see, is liquid water. So it is about two Celsius in temperature, maybe a little warmer now that it's summer, but it's coming off of the glacier and it's liquid because the water molecules themselves are vibrating at a fast enough pace to not crystallize into a solid, which would be ice, that requires a temperature of zero degrees, but they're also not vibrating so quickly to then break off from each other and split off into water vapor and rise against the force of gravity into the atmosphere. So these water molecules are vibrating like this. They have some attraction between them, but they can also still move and slip past each other. And that's why we get things like waterfalls. Really beautiful action here. You can see the water coming down and how sometimes it stays together and other times it splits apart. Now, water forms hydrogen bonds. And that's one of the reasons why we have these unique kind of flows and ebbs with water. Hydrogen bonds form as a result of the fact that a water molecule is actually a little mini magnet. Because of the angle between the hydrogens and the oxygen, and the fact that the electrons move away from those centers, Part of the water molecule is negatively charged and the other part of the molecule is positively charged. And these charges aren't that large, but they are there. They do exist. They do separate in their potential. So water forms a little dipole magnet. As a result of it having a positive and a negative charge, water molecules will find themselves attracted to other parts of the water molecule. So they want to stay together. And as a result, and these hydrogen bonds, they actually form uh, these structures that have a little bit of strength to them. For example, you might know of hydrogen bonds because you can float a paper clip on top of some water. It's actually strong enough to hold on to, there's enough surface tension that can hold on to a metal, a very dense element, right, or alloy, a metal paper clip. Or you can see how hydrogen bonds for this water here is resisting the force of this steam bubble from this geyser eruption here in Iceland. And eventually that steam bubble did overpower the hydrogen bonds, but you can see how they're able to move and flow and continue to hold until the very last moment, then they finally burst and break and everything scatters. So hydrogen bonds are one of the very interesting aspects of water that a lot of other molecules don't have because they don't form these magnet dipole structures. And what hydrogen bonds allow water to do are form these nanostructures. So now we're going to the quantum dynamic properties of water. Nanostructures are where multiple water molecules will form a usually spherical structure that is symmetrical, but not always spherical. But it may be a structure that is, let's say 18 water molecules together, or it can be up to like 200 plus water molecules all bounded together in a unique structure. Now these water um, nanostructures, they're at the nanometer scale, they're very small. They can actually capture and hold on to molecules and ions because they can encapsulate them. So this is something that's important because water nanostructures can hold on to these things that are biologically relevant and useful and the only way that those things can escape often is through something like ion cyclotron resonance. So that actual ion, let's say it's calcium two plus, or let's say another type of molecule like sugar can be trapped in this nanostructure and until it finds that resonant frequency, 
then it can leap out of the structure through ion cyclotron residence. So that requires a static magnetic field like we have with the Earth, and that also requires a pulse magnetic field or pulse electric field, depends on the orientation. You can have the static magnetic field of the Earth and the Schumann resonance is at 7.8 hertz and 14 hertz and 20 hertz and 25 and 33 hertz, that can trigger ion cyclotron resonance. So these water structures are a very important part of our biology. Now, as you may well know, the human body is made up of mostly water. For women, it's 50% water. They have more body fat than men. And then men are made up of about, on average, 60% water. So the majority of your body is water. And the fact that water can hold on to energy and information means it has a very critical role in overall the overall expression of your morphogenetic information field. We'll go into that just a little bit more. But what happens with these nanostructures, these water nanostructures, is that they actually form coherency domains. They have their own resonance to them. All the water molecules within a structure will resonate together at the same frequency and in phase. Because you can have something that's resonating both, uh, say, at 7.8 hertz, but they're out of phase, they cancel each other out. But they're resonating together, then you have a coherency domain that forms. And you can have coherency domains that form at the small scale and also at the large scale, just like the nanostructures. And you can also have super coherency domains where multiple independent coherency domains are resonating together. So you can imagine how they layer and nest. You have some resonating at lower frequencies and some resonating at higher frequencies. Here in Iceland, specifically where we are right now, there are no uh, artificial electromagnetic fields that I know of. There's no power grid, at least the main ones. There's no power grid, no 50, 60 hertz noise. There's no cell signal. It's a very pristine environment. So here, this water filtered all the um, nanostructures and coherency domains because they form naturally. About 40% of water will form coherency domains and the rest of the water molecules will just be in their own resonance structures and their own resonance. It's absorbing all the wonderful, amazing environmental energies of this location and the information of this location because electromagnetism is the dominant information carrier that we know of. I mean, it's how we interact with our environment. Our senses are electromagnetic, our visual sense, our sense of hearing, sound waves get converted into electromagnetic waves, nose, um, you know, smelling and tasting are chemical that get converted into electromagnetic uh, magnetic waves. And then our ability to feel our electromagnetic pulses too. So this water here, for example, or water that you have yourself is infused all the time with the energy of its environment. And in a place like this, it's infused with wonderful, natural, and invigorating life force generating energies. But in a place that has a lot of electrosmog and electropollution, then it's infused with those energies as well. Now, a common example of energetic infusion with water is a microwave. You put food into the microwave and it's beamed with microwaves. These are high frequency radio waves and that causes them to vibrate faster, and then some of that vibration gets turned into heat. And people will be like, oh, well, it's just heat that's generated. But we know now that there are a lot of non-thermal effects that happen in the body with electromagnetic radiation. DNA is a fractal antenna that connects to a wide range of electromagnetic spectrum from, let's say, near zero hertz all the way up past visible light and into the ionizing radiation part of the spectrum. And you also have things like ion channels and proteins and cell membranes and different molecules that interact with and enzymes that interact with electromagnetic radiation directly through non-thermal effects. The reason why is because electrons can actually move as they're stimulated in electric fields or magnetic fields because electrons have a very, 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 very tiny mass. So these things are able to move even if these power densities aren't that strong. So in a microwave, the very, very, very strong magnetic, um, you know, microwave signal that you're putting into whatever you're heating up, and that is then absorbed, not all of it is dissipated as heat, but then as you bring that into your body, it's now increasing the electromagnetic noise of your body and of your overall field. So this will then change your morphogenetic field, your information field, it'll change your cellular voltage gradients, 
and your electric potentials throughout the body. And this influences things like how cells, um, like cell behavior, both individual cell behavior, group cell behavior, how DNA expresses itself epigenetically, what parts of DNA are activating. Um, so water influences all this is very, very important because again, so much of our body is water. Now, if you start to utilize water and infuse water and think of water for its energetic properties and you're really conscious with this, then it's gonna take some time for you to have the overall reset with this new water uh, and this new energy and information in your morphogenetic field because your body doesn't turn over in a day. You can expedite the process, do something like fasting or if you're careful, dry fasting. But if you just make sure to uh, make, drink the cleanest water and infuse your water with goodies like love and let's say compassion, peace and success and abundance and all these things that you want in your life perhaps, then eventually this will go and sit deep, deep, deep into your body. For example, collagen is the most abundant protein in the body. Collagen makes up our connective tissues, so things like our fascia, cartilage, it's a big component of bone along with um, appetite. And then there's also uh, collagen throughout just other like tendons and ligaments and collagen is hydrated with three different layers of water molecules. And then those are all bound together and form you know, the larger connected tissue structure. So that takes some time. Collagen, there's not much blood flow to, uh, to cartilage and connected tissues. Those take some time to refresh. But eventually, if you're bringing in really good water into your body, that will get replaced. And then you're going to have water at the source in your connective tissues with these energy and informations that you put into them because of these uh, nanostructure and coherency domain um, aspects of water. Now, this gets very interesting, the fact that collagen and fascia in particular, for example, is piezoelectric in nature. It emits electric signal when put under mechanical stress. So if you've infused your water with energy and then you apply mechanical stress to your body, whether this is, let's say, working out or just through some yoga or stretching, then you are now emitting electric signal out into your body that has some of this energy and information in it. And this can alter the expression of your DNA, what parts of your DNA are activated. It can alter the cellular signaling in your body. Cells deciding what they, what they want to do. Are they, let's say you have an autoimmune disorder. Your white blood cells and other parts of your immune system are attacking your cells. Well, they're given different instructions. They're not going to do that. So water influences all these dynamics and it gets taken into our body at a very deep level. So it can be used for improving your health and wellness if you don't have any health problems to begin with and for really raising your life force energies and increasing your vitality and most likely your longevity. Uh, Iceland has some of the world's best life expectancy probably as a result of the fact that all their water is like this. They don't have any chemical additives to the water no fluoride, no chloride, uh, none of the stuff that creates toxic breakdown byproducts in your body and is really um, causes aging and also calcifies, let's say, like your pineal gland and causes a whole bunch of uh, problems throughout your body, your HPA axis. Um, you can bring this water into your body and then over time flush out the old water or at least keep the party going if you're ready doing this stuff. And this then has a huge impact on your overall consciousness because your overall information field starts to change as you really consciously seek out the best water and also fuse into it. If fuse into your water the best energy, then you can make these really big changes. Now, one way to infuse the water is to hold it near your heart chakra, right near your heart. This is the strongest electromagnetic field of the body at about 100 Picotesla in strength. Meanwhile, your brain, for example, brain waves are about one to 10 picotesla in strength. So you can hold your uh, water here in a, let's say, glass or a metal container, conductive might be better. Um, and you can infuse it with energy. They've done experiments with energy infusion and with plants where they ask volunteers to infuse water with either love or with hate for like a minute or so. 
And then they, they, uh, they use that water for the plants every single day. And the, wa the plants that were, uh, you know, given the hay water often died, but they also were stunted in their growth. They didn't grow that well. Whereas the plants that were given their love water, you know, were big and beautiful and just like so full and vibrant and uh, produce more fruit, for example, if it's still like a tomato plant. And this is something that you can do at home and check out yourself, but they've been a bunch of experiments into this. There've also been experiments into how you can um, basically put information into water by freezing it over some sort of image. Some really interesting things there Well, water will then freeze into the shape of the image that you gave it. So it's clear that water has the ability to capture this photonic energy from the environment or from you, because I'm also like right now emitting photonic energy from my heart, my brain, my entire bioelectric system. And then that uh, is taken into its either crystalline structure where it freezes or into its coherency uh, nanostructures that form into its liquid. So I want to talk about water and all these interesting effects and how you can use water for your uh, health and wellness to feel better, just to you know, feel good every single day and to help you in your growth of consciousness during your consciousness, uh, your evolution of consciousness, because that is really, uh, at least this is something I believe that's what we're here for is to raise our consciousness to the highest level possible. That's a gift to be here on planet Earth, to be able to visit places like this. It's a tremendous blessing. And as you go through life and you are aware of these things and you make, you make this a practice and you do it every single day, and you find those good environmental energies and you chase those out and you practice grounding and earthing and you're doing yoga and you're making sure you do deep diaphragmatic breathing of fresh air and go into the ocean and exercising and eating good food. Change your body at the core, totally like regenerate you. And then that then has a tremendous impact on how you actually perceive reality how you can see one situation, see the positive and the good in it, rather than seeing the same situation maybe five years back and only seeing the negative in it. There's always been a negative, sour mood. And the more that we're all just good, happy people, the more beautiful this planet and Earth that we live on can be. So I want to talk about water. I want to talk about all those dynamics. I would just say overall that water quality is so, so, so important. I mean, next to air quality, water quality is one of the most important things uh, like for life, it's air, water, and food. And then the people in the environment, the people that you're next to, that you spend time with in the environment that you're in. So really, I hope you take that to heart. Um, you know, maybe infuse some water with the energy and information from this video and see if that has an impact. Um, if you like the video, please click that like button, subscribe. I hope to see you all in future videos. And I wanna make an announcement in the fact that I'm launching uh, some tea blends. So I have Tranquility Tea, which is an amazing tea blend for just overall health and wellness and for gut health and for increasing parasympathetic activity and for feeling good. And then there's Vitality if you are needing some help and let's say balancing your hormones. And it's a little bit of a libido booster and aphrodisiac tea for those of you who are interested in that. And then there's Electricity Tea, which is a more of an energizing blend, contains a neuromate, it's also good just for your general health and wellness, anti-inflammatory, but also gives you a little bit of pep and zing in your step without any, uh, let's say, crashes afterwards, like coming to an energy drink or coffee. So you can find my tea blends at wildfreeorganic.com slash store. There'll be a link in the video description. This is a trial run, but if these do well, then I'll continue to provide these organic tea blends for you all uh, these are really, really great. And you can steep this tea in the best water. And then you can infuse your tea with all these energies. So if you want to learn more about these things, like the shoe on resonances, environmental energies, health and wellness, then I have videos for you here. Uh, I have some playlists here. And then I also have some videos that you may find interesting. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day. And I'll see you all in the next one. Ciao.